Malcolm. What makes you think humanity is worth saving? Right now, it's still kind of chilly out there. We already have a very pretty sunrise that's underway, and we are going to see a lot of sunshine out there for today. If we imagine a terrifying scenario where a nuclear weapon was to hit a major US city like New York, the consequences would be devastating. Not just for New York, but for the whole world. Today, we'll explore the domino effects of what could happen if this nightmare became a reality tomorrow. From the immediate impact to the long-term effects, we'll take a look at the potential devastation and how it would change our world forever. What would happen if a bomb like Little Boy, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, was detonated in New York City? Little Boy had an explosive yield of approximately 15 kilotons of TNT. When it was dropped on Hiroshima, it resulted in catastrophic destruction and loss of life. If a similar bomb were to hit Manhattan, the impact would be similarly devastating, but on a much larger scale due to the city's density and population. The explosion would create an intense fireball, vaporizing everything within a radius of about 200 meters or 650 feet. Skyscrapers, buildings and people within this zone would be instantly incinerated. The blast wave would then radiate outwards, causing severe damage to structures up to 340 meters or over a thousand feet away, shattering windows and collapsing buildings. Heavily built concrete buildings are severely damaged or demolished. Fatalities approach 100%. The immediate death toll would certainly be in the tens of thousands, if not more. Beyond the immediate blast zone, the heat and firestorm would cause widespread fires, engulfing large parts of the city. The intense heat would cause third-degree burns to people within 11 square kilometers, or 4.4 square miles from ground zero. Third-degree burns extend throughout the layers of skin and are often painless, because they destroy the pain nerves. They can cause severe scarring or disablement and can require amputation. The fallout, radioactive debris lifted into the atmosphere by the explosion, would spread out over a much larger area carried by wind patterns. This radioactive fallout would contaminate the environment, making it hazardous for survivors and first responders. Emergency services would be overwhelmed and the scale of destruction would make rescue efforts nearly impossible. Hospitals would be flooded and the city's infrastructure would be shattered. The psychological impact on survivors would be enormous and the city would face a long, difficult path to recovery, if recovery were even possible. However, such a scenario with a little boy atomic bomb detonating in New York is extremely unlikely. Only if terrorists could somehow get their hands on such a weapon could it happen, but the likelihood of that is very low. If a nuclear weapon were to detonate over New York City, it would most likely come from a nuclear-armed state, plunging the world into a possible nuclear world war. While New York City is a symbolic and economic hub, it lacks significant military targets, making it less likely to be a primary target in a nuclear conflict. Washington, D.C., with its concentration of political and military leadership, or U.S. nuclear silos, aimed at crippling the nation's nuclear arsenal, are more probable targets. Striking these locations would aim to dismantle the US command structure and reduce its retaliatory capabilities. However, there is an incentive to deliberately target densely populated areas like New York to maximize civilian casualties and cause widespread panic and destabilization, a strategy known as counter-value targeting. This approach aims to break the enemy's will to fight by inflicting massive civilian and infrastructural losses. The US and Russia possess the world's largest nuclear arsenals, remnants of the Cold War's arms race. Today, they continue to maintain and develop these formidable stockpiles, with Russia holding approximately 5,997 nuclear warheads and the US close behind with 5,550. 
These numbers alone are staggering, but the modern capabilities of these weapons make the situation even more alarming. Russia's arsenal includes the infamous Satan missile, known officially as the R-36. It has been a cornerstone of Russia's nuclear deterrent. However, it is the newer RS-28 Sarmat that truly represents the terrifying potential of modern nuclear technology. The RS-28 Sarmat, also known as the Satan II, is designed to carry multiple warheads and has the capacity to evade missile defenses, making it a potent tool of destruction. It can deliver up to 15 warheads anywhere in the world, ensuring that no target is beyond its reach. This means that a single missile can deliver 15 separate nuclear warheads to different targets. This capability is known as multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, making the Satan II missile a highly destructive and versatile weapon designed to overwhelm defenses and deliver catastrophic damage to multiple targets. Based on various reports and analyses by defense experts, the Satan II missile has a total payload capacity that can unleash a maximum energy anywhere from 15 to 50 megatons of TNT. Now, let's imagine the terrifying scenario on the lower end. A single Satan II missile is launched towards New York City, with each of its 15 warheads having a yield of one megaton of TNT. The Satan II missile can only be launched from land-based silos. If launched from the Uzhur missile base in southern Siberia, it would travel over 9,250 kilometers, or over 5,750 miles, to reach New York City. With a top speed of Mach 20, and taking into account the different phases of flight, it would reach New York in about 30 to 35 minutes. Even though it is extremely unlikely that a single missile would be used in a nuclear war scenario, for educational purposes, we will imagine that a Satan II missile is launched and has now reached New York City to understand the raw power of such weapons. In our earlier example, we imagined a little boy atomic bomb detonating over New York City with an energy of 15 kilotons of TNT. Now consider the Satan II missile, which has a thousand times that power at 15 megatons of TNT. If we thought it would be difficult for New York to recover from a little boy atomic bomb, there is no question that the RS-28 missile would utterly destroy the city. The largest US thermonuclear weapon ever detonated, Castle Bravo, had a 15 megaton energy release, providing data and simulations that help us understand the potential effects of a nuclear strike of this magnitude. If a Satan II missile, with its 15 megaton yield, were to detonate over New York City, the destruction would be catastrophic. The explosion would create a fireball with a radius of over 4 kilometers, or 2.6 miles, vaporizing everything within an area of over 50 square kilometers, or 19 square miles. The extreme heat would produce temperatures higher than the surface of the sun, incinerating buildings, vehicles, and people in an instant. Beyond the immediate fireball, the thermal radiation would cause third-degree burns up to 34 kilometers, or 21 miles away. This would encompass most of the New York metropolitan area, causing severe burns and igniting widespread fires that would be impossible to control. While the biggest payload capability of a US missile is found in the Trident II submarine-launched ballistic missile, or SLBM. The Trident II can carry multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, each with a nuclear warhead. Typically, it can be equipped with up to eight warheads, each with a yield of around 475 kilotons, although it can theoretically carry up to 14 warheads, depending on the configuration and the mission requirements. This makes the Trident II one of the most powerful and flexible delivery systems in the US nuclear arsenal. If the US were to launch a Trident II missile against Moscow, the most plausible launch sites would be from submarines in the Black Sea or the Baltic Sea. While the Black Sea is an option, the Baltic Sea, often referred to as Lake NATO, is more likely due to its proximity to Moscow. The distance from the Baltic Sea to Moscow is just over 700 kilometers, or about 430 miles, considering the missile's top speed of Mach 24, approximately 29,000 kilometers per hour, or 18,000 miles per hour, and accounting for the various flight phases, 
it would likely reach Moscow in just over 10 minutes. Upon detonation, the missile's multiple warheads, each with a yield of up to 475 kilotons, would create immense destruction. The initial blast would generate a fireball with temperatures hotter than the sun, vaporizing everything within a radius of several kilometers. The shock wave would flatten buildings and infrastructure over a wide area, while the intense heat would ignite fires causing further damage. The electromagnetic pulse or EMP generated by the explosion would disable electronic devices and communications over a vast area, compounding the chaos. The combined effects of the blast, heat, radiation and EMP would result in catastrophic loss of life and infrastructure, effectively crippling Moscow and severely impacting Russia's ability to function as a nation. During the Cold War and beyond, there have been discussions and plans involving the use of nuclear weapons to create catastrophic events like tsunamis. One such Soviet project, codenamed Lavina, meaning avalanche, aimed to create an artificial tsunami using a massive explosion, intended to cause significant casualties and damage to coastal cities. This project was conceived as an alternative to traditional nuclear weapons, leveraging the destructive power of a massive wave to wipe out enemy coastal cities. There has been speculation and discussion about the possibility of using a nuclear weapon to also trigger an eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano. However, scientific consensus indicates that this scenario is highly unlikely. The energy required to trigger an eruption far exceeds what a nuclear detonation could provide. Therefore, while the idea is theoretically dramatic, it lacks practical feasibility. What didn't lack practicality was the Tsar bomber. It was the most powerful nuclear weapon ever detonated with a yield of 50 megatons of TNT. This Soviet bomb was tested on October 30th, 1961 over the Novaya Zemlya archipelago in the Arctic Ocean. The blast could be seen from a thousand kilometers away, as far as Norway. The shockwave from the explosion circled the Earth three times and windows were shattered up to 900 kilometers from the blast site. Now imagine the Tsar bomber detonating over New York City. The fireball alone would incinerate everything within over a five kilometer or over three mile radius, vaporizing buildings and infrastructure instantly. Heavy blast damage would spread over a radius of nine kilometers, covering over 250 square kilometers or about 100 square miles, resulting in the total destruction of most buildings and severe injuries to anyone in this zone. Moderate blast damage would extend even further, up to 20 kilometers, covering a staggering 1,350 square kilometers or over 500 square miles. In this area, most residential buildings would collapse from overpressure, causing universal injuries and widespread fatalities. The chances of fires starting in commercial and residential buildings would be extremely high, and these fires would spread rapidly due to the extensive damage. The optimal height of burst to maximize these effects would be 11.5 kilometers, or over seven miles, ensuring the greatest possible area of devastation. Thermal radiation from the explosion would cause third-degree burns up to 60 kilometers, or 37 miles away. The intense heat would ignite fires over this vast area, adding to the overall destruction. The Tsar bomber was never designed as a practical weapon, but rather to demonstrate the sheer power that could be unleashed. Some experts believe that the higher end of the yield range for the Satan II missile reaches 50 megatons, exactly the yield of the Tsar bomber, making this scenario even more terrifying. Since the Tsar bomber could be seen from as far as Norway, a nuclear weapon with a 50 megaton energy detonation over New York City would be visible all the way to Columbia, South Carolina, and would shatter windows across Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Michigan, and up north reaching Quebec, Canada. This is the power of just a single nuclear weapon with a 50 megaton explosion. Witnessing such a terrifying scenario over New York City would certainly mean the end of civilization as we know it, as the retaliation response would trigger a global nuclear war, leading to unimaginable destruction and loss of life. Isaiah 34 Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. 
For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountain shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea, and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. But the Lord hath a sacrifice in Bozrah, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls in their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day, the smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it, the owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing, and thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons, and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow, the screech owl also shall rest there, and find for herself a place of rest. There shall the great owl make her nest, and lay, and hatch, and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, and read, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them, and he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided it unto them by a line. They shall possess it for ever, from generation to generation shall they dwell therein.